I never realized how good I was at setting boundaries until I started comparing myself to other women who maybe didn't set boundaries the way I do. And I learned and have been really thinking about this, learning how to set boundaries well without being a jerk. So maintaining kindness, maintaining grace, and also being very vocal and very clear on what you're okay and not okay with is a skill that you learn with practice. I thought it would be really good to make a video on this because I have noticed specifically with myself as a woman and the other women that I spend time with making a glorified stereotypical sweeping statement here. I noticed that women are not that great at setting boundaries. Generalized statement, some women are excellent at it, but as a general rule of thumb, I think we all need a little bit of improvement when it comes to setting boundaries. And I wanna talk about that today. First things first, definition of a boundary. Because we talk about boundary setting, I feel like a lot in our culture, and sometimes boundaries are toxic behavior, which is not this. I feel that a definition of a boundary, and the literal definition of a boundary, is something that indicates or fixes a limit or extent. So it's basically saying this, like if you think about like a literal boundary, it's like this is what's in the tolerated circle, allowed circle, permitted circle. This is what's not. So you're drawing a line, you're fixing a limit, you're drawing a boundary. I'm a natural people pleaser. I love to make people happy. And I also have learned over the years how to become more confident. So where I am coming from is a natural people pleaser who had to learn how to communicate what she wanted and set boundaries. That's a different kind of personality than somebody who's prone to always getting what they want and kind of walking all over people. So for me, boundaries might be more important than somebody else because I tend to people please. I tend to be low confrontation. I tend to just let things go. So I had to learn they're all the more important for me. But here's the first thing. If you're like me and you've got that personality, the first thing that's gonna happen is you're going to feel, when you start setting boundaries, you're going to feel selfish and people are going to call you selfish because you've never set a boundary before, at least for me, I'd never set a boundary before in my life. Just make your peace with that. There's going to be a learning process. There's going to be a, a learning curve. You might even be too selfish at one area while you figure out how to do it the right way. That's okay, it's part of the learning process. It's not good to not have any boundaries at all. It's just as unhealthy as having too many boundaries. Second thing you should know, the people who bitch and moan about your boundaries are the people who need the boundaries the most. If I set a boundary with a good friend. She'd be like, babe, thank you so much for telling me. No worries. <laughs> Case closed, solved, we're done. That's a good friend. If I set a boundary with someone who needs the boundary set, why are you doing this? I can't even believe this. Uh, la la la, I don't deserve this. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just on and on and on and la 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 la. The people who bitch and moan at your boundaries the most are the people who need it the most. So see the bitching and moaning as a confirmation that the boundary should have existed there in the first place because good people who want your best interest and wants you to be happy, will not complain about your boundaries. I'll give you a really good example. My sister and I, we have this policy where we're really like, she started it and I went along with it because um, I think it's a great boundary. If she's not feeling well, if she's feeling sick, she doesn't let people see her and she doesn't go see people who are sick. It seems like a simple boundary, right? Like if you're sick, I'm not gonna see you. But you would be surprised at the number of people who I can't believe you're not going to Jimmy's graduation party. What if it's just a cold? She's like, even if it's just a cold, I don't wanna give it to somebody. Or even if you just have a cold, I don't wanna get it. So anytime she's not feeling well, she's like, hey, I'm not going in. I'm like, cool, no worries. I also don't wanna get sick. This is a great boundary, I respect it. Other people in our family, other people around, you'd think we told them that we would never see them again. Another thing I've learned is that just because it's always been done this way, doesn't mean you have to, okay? So I'm gonna use my family. I'm gonna not name names, obviously. Someone in my immediate family called me the other day and they were like, so-and-so relative hasn't heard from you in a while, you should text them, right? So like, so-and-so relative hasn't heard from you in a while, you should text them. And I straight up said, why? I'm not interested in having a relationship with them. And I wasn't trying to become traditional. I was literally like, like, I don't want a relationship with this person, why should I text them? Then this immediate family member said, well, I see where you're coming from. But sometimes we have to do things we don't want to do because it's family. Maybe you've heard that before, because it's family. Without getting into a lot of details, there's reasons why this, this person is not getting texts from me. It's the right decision, it's the right boundary, but it's an uncomfortable boundary. It's an awkward boundary. It's a weird boundary, but I'm just not going there. I'm just not doing that. And so I didn't, with this person who was like, you should text them, I didn't feel the need to engage in huge confrontation, but here's what I thought. I'm like, look, that's your choice. If you feel 
that you are going to choose to spend time with people you don't like and don't respect because you feel like you should, that's your choice. And I respect that, but that's not my choice. I'm choosing to have a relationship with that person because I don't think they're a very good person to have a relationship with. I don't think they're a very nice person. Like just because you have a pattern of like, well, we've always done this, so I'm gonna be another generation continuing this. I'm just not, like why? Why would I continue to perpetuate this part of our family tree? I'm just not going to. We can have new cycles. We can break some generational stuff. It's different, it's new, it's awkward, it's uncomfortable, but it's really healthy. And so I've noticed that we all seem to have these like knee jerk negative reactions to setting boundaries, especially if we're a low confrontation, I'm a low confrontation person, or we're people pleasers. And so it can feel like this is a negative thing to set a boundary, but it's actually a negative thing to not set the boundary. And it can have really affect your success, by the way. Um, if you have family members, for example, who are always saying like, when are you gonna get a real job? Those are people I would stop hanging out with. Like literally, you're not supportive of me. That's fine. You can keep working your job. I'm not gonna tell you, you have to quit your job and become an entrepreneur, but we're just not gonna spend a lot of time together. And it doesn't need to be, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, it doesn't need to be like a big confrontation where you're like, you've never supported me and you've never la la la. You can just choose to not give them your energy. In my own personal experience, anytime I was afraid to set a boundary, maybe you've been afraid to set a boundary before where you're like, ah, that's actually an indication for me that the boundary needs to be set. So if I have a hesitation drawing a line in the sand about XYZ issue, that's a sign that XYZ issue actually needs to be set. We need to have a conversation around that. The boundary needs to happen. So it's this little like gut feeling thing I can have. I'm like, oh, I'm feeling weird about this. I feel uncomfortable. I feel afraid. I'd rather be quiet. I'd rather not say anything. I'd rather let it go. That's probably a sign I need to do something about it. Because when I'm in a healthy relationship, I feel comfortable to set a boundary, right? Like if I want to tell my husband like, hey, like put your, I don't know, put your laundry in the hamper, right? To use a classic household example. I feel safe to do that because we're in a good relationship. But if I were in a different kind of relationship and I didn't feel safe to set that boundary, that's an issue that the, that's an indication that the boundary itself needs to be set. Like I said a little earlier, sometimes you don't need to have a huge confrontation. I think that's important. Boundary setting doesn't mean you have to call every member of your family and say, you're homophobic or you're a jerk or you're a racist or like, you know, all the different things. Although sometimes you should, right? Depending on the situation or you're walking all over me or like whatever it might be. Sometimes it can literally be, I'm just not gonna text back or a friend who's continually sucking your energy. I'm just not gonna make a point to spend time with you anymore. Sometimes it doesn't have to be a big controversial end of the relationship. You can just take a step back and create a boundary by literally pulling back your energy. A stepping stone, especially if you're a people pleaser or a non-confrontational person. Ultimately, what I've learned is that what I tolerate is what I endorse. It's a classic corporate saying, what you tolerate is what you endorse. And it's like a management thing, but it's true. What I tolerate in my life is what I'm saying, this is okay, I endorse this. And so I had to take a hard look at myself and say, I'm letting people walk all over me. It's affecting my success. It's affecting my relationship with my husband, et cetera, et cetera. I need to set some boundaries and it's actually more healthy for me to set boundaries than not. So these are my thoughts on boundaries. I'm super curious to get your thoughts on boundaries, especially how boundaries have affected you as an entrepreneur. Super curious. I know you've got something to say. Drop it in the comments. I think this is a good conversation for us to have. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the comments.